but it's not really the sound of silence because I am talking over it. Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, today's uh, stream pre-stream patter was just me claiming that I was speaking the sounds of silence, which is, of course, a self-contradiction. We are seeing some issues here, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how to read this. Um, so I, I don't know if uh, this is saying that I'm... It says I'm live, but it's got a little red thingy next to it, which I don't understand. So that could be a very bad thing. Um, it says my resolution is 600p, which I... There we go. Now it says live and excellent. So I guess that's that's how we, we get to know that we're excellent. Dude, Bill and Ted there. Um, okay, so today we're going to be uh, continuing what we had last time with a couple of um, minor changes. We're trying to find stars that are close to Betelgeuse. Um, and I think I've done all the possible Michael Keaton Betelgeuse jokes already, so we're just going to go straight into it. The last time we first limited by distance and then limited by degree, in other words, the direction that Betelgeuse is in, but we ran into some issues because we weren't sure about right ascension and declination, which do change over time uh, because of precession and nutation. So we weren't sure. Uh, the, the Gaia catalog seems to indicate they're using a, um, a, an epoch of 2015.5 for, for stars close to Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse itself won't be included in Gaia because it's far too bright. Um, so fortunately, I think just at the end of the stream last time, we figured out uh, that we want to really use galactic coordinates, which don't change, a galactic longitude and latitude. Uh, now, ideally, in a perfect world, we would be able to get these from Gaia directly because we'd like to use the same source for all of our data. I don't think Betelgeuse is going to be in there, unfortunately, because it is too bright. Um, and let's see here. So, I mean, we could... Um, let's see. I could put this in. I don't... Yeah. I don't think it's going to... It's not going to give us anything. Or even if we put it in as alpha... Yeah. Unfortunately, anything that is really bright is not going to, to resolve because it doesn't in include the bright stars. Um, so there's several ways to get the uh, uh, the uh, galactic coordinates of Betelgeuse. Uh, we could Google for it. We could ask my cool little... Um, this hardly ever works, though. But we, we're actually going to use something else. But uh, this is a waste of time, and that's what the stream's all about. Yeah, and it doesn't actually give us the galactic coordinates. Um, we can use Stellarium, which we're going to do for a different reason. We are going to use it, and then we're going to explain why we're using it. And we are going to use the the copy that is really cool, the cool copy of Stellarium, uh, which only works in one of these screens for some reason. Someone uh, should one day figure that out, uh, but whatever. It's possible I have environment variables set differently. I don't care enough to actually check, though. So we're going to we're gonna basically waste some time now. Um, I'm not even ashamed of it anymore. Uh, and we're going to look at Betelgeuse, but there's another thing we actually want to see here. Another reason to, hang on, whoa. I've been spelling it wrong all this time. God damn it. Well, I am pissed at myself. I thought it was G-U-E. And there it is. Betelgeuse. Uh, Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse. Galactic longitude and latitude is minus 160, minus 19, roughly speaking. We're not going to use that number as accurate, so it's okay to not, you know, note it down exactly. Um, yep, I've lost my Emacs is what you would say if you had lost your Emacs, which people frequently do. Okay, um, so roughly, just to make sure, this is what some people call a sanity check, to make sure that, uh, you know, the other numbers we get should agree. Now, for some reason, it says the super galactic longitude and latitude, but that's too clever. Minus 160 comma minus 9. Normally, we would have to note which one's latitude and which one's longitude, but uh, in this case, minus 160 can't be a latitude, so it has to be longitude. Okay, awesome. So the thing we actually wanted to look at uh, in Stellarium, other than that, um, I do have a previous answer here where I say hip to be square. No, just kidding. Hip 27648 is the closest star to Betelgeuse. Now, clo being close in angular distance doesn't mean you're close in actual distance, but the converse is true. If you're close in um, real 3D distance, the, the angular distance is going to be pretty close too. So I'm sort of curious to see if we can find hip 27648.
okay, how well, we did. And it's actually not that close to Beagle Geek. Um, well, actually, I shouldn't say that because we're actually very, very tight right now. Uh, so it's actually not that close. Let's see. According to this, and again, we're using a different catalog here. Um, it's distance and light years should be pretty close to the distance that Beetle Goose has. Absolute magnitude, RA deck, RA deck, HA deck, da 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 da. Do we even have this? Uh, distance, 611 light years. Beetle Goose distance, according to them. Um, 497 light years. So that is actually pretty bad. I wish I could go back to what that number was. Is there an undo? Is there a, a focus back on the thingy I had? Um, wow, I totally just effed that up. 27648. And to avoid doing this back and forth thing again, 497.95 plus minus 56. It's not looking good actually. Um, and this one, 611.93, um, plus or minus 5.89. So we now have a very ugly discrepancy here that says, uh, at the very least, HIP 27648 is a lot further uh, from Beetlejuice than uh, 17 light years. So I think the problem here is going to be the HYG catalog. Uh, in fact, I know for a fact it's going to be that. So let's go ahead and f with that. And I think we did this yesterday. Head minus one. Z cat. Yeah, this sucker here. We do need to be in the right direction for this to work. And, oh wow, I was filling it wrong. Okay, so let's see if there's anything in here. It gives a lot of information, of course. Uh, RA deck um, spectral class XYZ with the, the motion. And so the XYZ coordinates, of course, are the ones we use to determine the distance. Um, so here's the proper name, RA declination. PM proper motion and RA proper motion declination, RV thingy that goes off the edge of the screen. Um, so, um, X, Y, Z. I mean, we have this also in our program. We have it in a lot of places. Okay, that's spectral class. So according to this, it's, it's this, and this is in parsecs. Um, so actually it's very, very close to 151 parsecs um, right along the uh, galactic uh, galactic. Uh, XY being both close to zero makes it close to the galactic equator. So, and I get the feeling maybe I'm choosing the wrong two numbers, aren't I? Oh yeah, you're right. I, I don't know why I said you're right. Uh, so sorry, it's these three numbers. Um, this is the spectral class here. This is the CI number, which I don't know what that means, but it's not what we want. XY, so this, this is the XYZ coordinates here. Um, and now, what we're going to do here is we're going to try to compute uh, the ecliptic latitude, sorry, the galactic, oh, wait a minute, fudge. There's, there's more than one issue here. Um, first of all, I need to confirm these are galactic coordinates, which I think is true. They're not RA and declination coordinates. You couldn't get them from these two numbers here. The second and much bigger problem is this number is going to be pretty close to 151 parsecs. Um, so I get the feeling we are in trouble. 492 light years. That's actually um, that's actually pretty close to what we have here. So we, we something is quite wrong. Something is not right. Uh, if Miss Clavel was around, you need to sing the song. Um, and this one, according to Stellarium, is uh, 611 light years away, which is not good at all. Um, 
thing. So either I use the wrong, um, I didn't use the tip number, I used the, the catalog number, but which I didn't because I used the proper name. Um, but let's take a look at this sucker, 27648. There will be more than one of it. Let's see, two seven six four. I think by doing this, I can I can just. Um, why are there two of these? This is the one that has the hip number two seven six four eight. This is the um, the H I Y G number, which is not not a real catalog number. So now we have issues. Issues, issues, issues. So there's this. There's this magic number I don't understand, and then there are the these three numbers. that represent the uh, the x, y, and z coordinates. So this actually looks like it's saying that this star is at 153, plus a get little bit of uh, parsecs. Um, so this this is a uh, giving us a different answer. Um, so now we have a really kind of a ugly issue of um, the Stellarium is disagreeing significantly uh, with the um, with the HYG catalog, so we probably should put that in as a note. Uh, I'm this is not going to be a huge issue for us because it looks like on Beetlejuice we're getting roughly the same thing, which is which is good. Um, uh, six four eight way off, and others maybe way off too. Stellarium versus HYG. But again, these are not, you know, that carefully measured, so I wouldn't, it's not that surprising that they differ. The problem is it looks really, really bad if we don't mention it because someone's using Stellarium, they're going to say, hey, this, this star is nowhere near Betelgeuse, and yet you said it was. Uh, or they won't say that. I don't really care. Um, but now we will get back to our friend Betelgeuse. And I'm still not really happy with the way they pasted this bullshit into here. Because it's very clear this is not black sky. This is an image that has been kind of slapped on top of uh, on top of a black screen. Okay, so I'm probably going to stop time just because I um, don't like the way this does things. Because um, we don't need it and it's annoying. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, first of all, I guess we should probably look in the HYG um, README. Come on, you have a read me. But see, I'm pretty sure these are actually galactic coordinates, but we're gonna, you know, we, we don't wanna be. Um, oh, that's not cool. Equatorial coordinates as seen from Earth. Um, glad we checked. So I don't have to have anything here that are um, that's in galactic coordinates. Maybe, maybe, maybe we, they don't. Okay, they they apparently don't. We can convert between the two, uh, but we obviously have to use the same coordinate system. So big booyah on me. Um, so now we're gonna have to disclaim a little bit uh, that even though <laughs> the uh, Gaia DR2 release talks about when uh, stars' right ascension and declination are mentioned, it does reduce them back to ICRS. So in other words, we can use the J2000 values uh, that HYG gives us. But we need to mention that so people know that we're not, we're not fudging. Um, people don't point that as an error. Um, and we need to quote that. I think we have, though, in README. I'm, I'm doing this in two separate files, which is bad. In README closest, we do have a link to where it, it does say that. Um, okay, so now we want to. The cool thing here is if we look uh, very close, we're going to go ahead and just get rid of Stellarium real quick. Uh, if you look really close to where Betelgeuse is, um, we could, in theory, map all the stars that are angularly close to Betelgeuse, which might be cool for a completely different reason, before we kind of cut off the distance parameters. Um, there might be too many of them, but let's. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, I do not necessarily want to be converting between galactic coordinates. Ugh. Hmm. 
I don't want to be connect, uh, co correcting between galactic coordinates and um, and HR and uh, right ascension and um, declination. But you know what? I think I think we can actually use Betelgeuse's galactic coordinates because that's the only star that we have to kind of convert. The others. And the problem is, of course, we're not going to do it here from HYG data. We're going to use a different source because HYG data doesn't have it. And it, we could compute it, but it's more difficult. So we want to use sort of a trusted source for galactic coordinates and uh, then use that as our uh, then use that as our base for, for where we're looking. Uh, it is Pomodoro time, but it is the first one, so we will skip it. Um, but we will go with the next one because it is Pomodoro is important for Pomodoroans. I don't know what that means. And so this statement might be irrelevant if we go ahead and go with uh, Betelgeuse's galactic coordinates. Um, we will mention uh, what we just said, not in HYG, could translate, but better direct source. Um, and the better direct source I'm going to say is you should never use, remember, the, the fr fundamental rule of Wikipedia. You're not supposed to use Wikipedia as a, fun as a first source. So I'm going to try, not very hard, to find the galactic uh, coordinates um, uh, of Betelgeuse in some place that is actually... Ooh, the Simbad catalog is actually not a bad... Ooh. Well, let's use the Simbad catalog. That's actually a pretty damn good... Um, a pretty damn good reference. Um, uh, I need to disclaim that the previous answer uh, used HYG and numbers may not agree. So there too. Um, let's see. Galactic coordinates epoch episode number I, I'm thinking these are in degrees, but um, let's see. This 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 might. Um, all right, we might have some issues here. Galactic coordinates one ninety nine minus nine. I think the minus nine we had the one ninety nine is pretty far off from the uh, the minus one sixty. Uh, and well actually it's, it's not minus 160 plus 360 is 200 so we just this is basically just converting to positive degrees so I'm, I'm okay with that I don't know what these little freaky things in here mean I assume they're numbers of some sort I think they might be the error measurements um, but we can use this this is this is actually pretty good data here for Betelgeuse uh, you will notice that there is no indication of uh, distance in the galactic coordinates. Galactic coordinates, oh wow, they actually do tell you what they are. Um, okay, I don't like the fact they're saying RA and uh, deck because those are not what these are. Um, oh, hang on. Um, error ellipse. Um, quality of flag. This is some cool shit. I'm not going to use it, though. Um, okay. Now, vaguely interesting here are these proper motions, because they could actually uh, be used to compute Betelgeuse's position. So I will mention proper motion. I won't compute for it, because it's getting a little bit too stupid. Hello, hello, hello. We have a visitor. It is Milkister Moo. How are you doing, sir? Welcome to my stream. You are the first visitor in many a moon, or... I guess many a sun, because it's not really been a month yet. Uh, how goes? Tell me if you are. Uh, uh, tell me anything, you know, just just basically share your life with me, man. Or if you're interested in what we're doing, we're trying to find stars that are close to Betelgeuse in the Gaia Data 2 release catalog, uh, and using um, the their interface and not using the list that I have. No, that's fine. You uh, you know you had exams. Uh, I'm hoping they were like, you know, uh, school exams, not medical exams, or if they were medical exams, I hope you do or do not have whatever conditions you do or do not want to have. Um, if you have the coronavirus, um, 
think that can be transferred to computers, so be careful. Um, if you have the Miller Light virus, that's that's actually okay. Uh, Bud Light virus. Um, that would make a terrible commercial. You've got the coronavirus. I asked for a Bud Light. Um, okay. So whatever the hell we're doing here until... Okay. If I get the virus, I'll be sure to spread it around. This is, by the way, really good advice. Um, if you do get the coronavirus, or in fact any virus, or bacterial infection, you know, they're back virus, bacteria, do spread it as much as possible to everyone else. Because if you're going to suffer, they might as well suffer too. And if something really, is, is, if, you know, if it really has some longer term side effects than we think, you don't really want other people to be one up on you. If you're going to be sick and reduced in capacity, you want everybody else reduced in capacity. Uh, ideally more than you are, but at least as much as you are. So remember kids, spread the coronavirus, uh, spread any virus you have, spread bacterial infections, and um, don't wash your hands. Uh, play with your, okay, I can't really say that. I, I mean, I personally cannot say that last part. But anyway, so, so thank you for that. That is very good. I, um, I'm going to take a moment here to point out that uh, I very rarely penis. Yes, be sure to play with your penis. Um, which is not does not spread the coronavirus, but it's just a fun thing to do. Now, if you're a girl, uh, play with someone else's penis. I mean, I w you know, you would think the uh, the the, in the analogous advice would be to play with your clitoris, but that thing is damn hard to find. I mean, I swear to God, I I've looked for it and on, on a woman, and you know, goddamn, who knows what the hell's down there? Seriously, you've just got like, like a bunch of crap down there. So play with someone else's penis. It's easy to find. It's fun. And um, I'm probably, I wonder how far I can do stuff like this before you get banned, because it's not really, you're allowed to say the word penis and clitoris on stream, um, and I'm not, you know, but my content is not intended for children. YouTube makes that very clear that I have to legally say that. So if you really are a child watching this, you are not supposed to be watching this, and I take no legal responsibility if you're watching this. If you're an adult, definitely go play with someone's penis. It will ask permission first. So um, if it's your penis, go for it. If it's someone else's penis, that's true, no one is watching. You're 19. Oh, good. Well, good. You're clear then. Um, if it's someone else's penis, do try to ask permission. Now, if it's a dead penis um, and you're like in a laboratory or something, again, just follow whatever rules you feel is appropriate with penis playing. Um, someone's going to count how many times I said the word penis in here. All right. I think that's enough about penises. Now we're going to go back to Beetlejuice. Uh, which is not Orion's penis. Um, Orion does have something that looks like a penis, although they usually call it the belt. I mean, you know, whatever. Um, okay, Beetlejuice, a red giant star. Alpha, Alpha Orionis. Lots of good stuff we know about it. Um, and the big, the big reason it's gotten interesting, of course, is because it's been dimming recently. Um, and, and that is uh, uh, some... Some and and by the way, when I say recently, that's the other thing I'm gonna have to mention here, because um, this is actually sort of interesting. And this I think I've got down here with the uh, the Andromeda paradox. Recently is sort of a relative term here. Betelgeuse is like 500 light years away from us, so anything we see it that's happening to it that we're seeing now happened really about 500 years ago. Some people who not really very astronomical believe Betelgeuse is gonna go nova. It's theoretically possible that's already happened and the, the light hasn't reached us yet. Um, and that's another reason why um, the current closest stars to Betelgeuse might be less important than the ones that are be closest to it 500 years from now, which is now for Betelgeuse, except it's not because of the way relativistic physicists talk. They will claim the current time on Betelgeuse is 500 years ago, but they're stupid and they, that causes things like the Andromeda Paradox. Have I said enough crap? Okay. I'm going to put a break line in here in case you want to say more stuff. I don't want to miss it. Uh, a break line meaning a line where I talk. So um, so when you say something, it'll, it'll show up below that. Okay. Totally lost my concentration. All right. So this is Betelgeuse's galactic coordinates. Um, and and it, there's no distance mentioned in the galactic coordinates, although there's a distance. 
Let's see if we have a distance mentioned here. Now we're gonna. I'm really, really gonna regret doing this. Um. Oh, fudge me, fudge, 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 fudge. The question is, should I use the par the value given by uh, hyg data, or use this parallax now? Mofo. I'm gonna go ahead and use this parallax. Um, because I guess if you're going to use, otherwise I'll be using two sources, uh, three sources, if I get the one of one of these things from somewhere else. So I've got a parallax of uh, 6.55, and that is in milli arc seconds, I think. No, micro. Ah, milli arc seconds. I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, so reality, that is, of course, 0 .006, uh, which means it is, oh, hang on, what the hell, is that correct? Six five five, yeah. So it's really this uh, this many parsecs away, um, which actually doesn't matter because we're we're going to be using parallax for the for the search as well. Um, but just to make ourselves feel better, convert. Let's just watch because I want to. I like. I want to test my Wolfram thingy, um, parsecs to light years. Because it's just, it's just really cool to have a command line Wolfram uh, going, even though half the time it doesn't work. Well, so actually, yeah, that's exactly that many light years away. Um, I do want to put something about precision versus accuracy in there. I mean, this is a very precise answer, but it's not. I mean, there's no way we have this level of accuracy. Um, I'm tempted to compute what level of accuracy this would be. Um... I mean, this is like 10 to the minus 20th. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I shouldn't really try to do that. Uh, that is, even for me, unless someone in the chat wants it, uh, even for me, too much, uh, too, too much of a diversion or a digression uh, to do. Okay, so now we have all this data on Betelgeuse. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a one degree box search. So we're going to, this is the uh, galactic... Uh, longitude, this is the galactic latitude, and we will search within one degree on either side of this without a distance restriction first. So let's go ahead and go to our, uh, not this, no, that was something we did earlier, it was fun. Uh, not this, not this, this is the question, and where do we have the, holy crap. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Okay. Um, la, 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 la. I'm going to find this. Um, yeah, this we want to keep. This is, a, this is an important source for us. Here we go. And we will pin this, as I should have done earlier. This is the Gaia search engine. Uh, you do have to go over here. And I do have this as a note in the table. And then you have to go and look at the Gaia DR2 source, this sucker here. Uh, and let's take a look at our, we had a query earlier, we need to modify it slightly. Um, in fact, just to make things messy, oh, actually our query was where it's supposed to be, which is in, excuse me, closest. Okay, so th these were the queries we had. Um, so now we're going to say where, yeah, and we do need to change our numbers around here because... Um, we're now using galactic latitude and longitude. Let's see what those actually are here. I think they're actually just one letters. People just love having the sort of conceit of using one letter for, uh, yeah. L, I'm pretty sure, is galactic longitude, and B is galactic latitude. Okay. So the galactic latitude is going to be greater than Oh, how obnoxious can I be with this? Hang on. This is worth... Uh, basically, we're making this do a little bit more work if we do something like this. And and that's why we do it. We want to fuck with things as much as possible. We're making this work slightly harder just so I don't have to do an addition myself. Um, and the latitude should be greater than this. This might be too big of a range. We might get too many too many things of this. In fact, um, B is less than, in fact, I'm going to do a count star first. 
Okay, so these are all the things that are in the general direction of Betelgeuse, but not necessarily close to Betelgeuse. Uh, and Milky, Milky Stramu, in case you're wondering, um, I have made all the Beetlejuice uh, Michael Keaton movie puns, saying it three times already, so I'm, I'm sort of out. If you have any, let me know. If you have any puns about how to do this for Beetlejuice, let me know. Okay, so let's, I'm going to go ahead and do the select star. It, I mean, I think it does limit how many results you get back. It might not, in which case I might just want to download the whole thing. So let's make sure this is correct. I, I don't know if it'll do the math for me. Uh, apparently it will. So this is in progress. Uh, as we saw yesterday, or actually last time, which was the day before yesterday, this can take a while. This is asynchronous, so this could take a while. Um, uh, but we really have nothing better to do at the moment, so we'll watch it, because usually these queries do take like a minute or two. They don't take that long. Um, of course, I haven't made a query like this before, so it's quite possible we're going to get a bajillions of answers. Um, I thought there was a place where you could actually, oh, there it is, visualization. Um, nope, it's the one I meant to do. There we go. Um, and the visualization may actually have the brighter stars in it. Um, um, come on, this is really slow. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't remember if it does or does not, so we may or may not be able to find uh, Beetlejuice. Beetle. Whoa. Does that actually work? Hold on. That it didn't do anything here, but uh I let's just see. I mean it that doesn't it looks like it changed the center. There are a lot of freaking stars in, in Now this gap here this might be because Beetlejuice on photographic film, <coughs> actually, oh wow, we might actually have hit what we need. Uh, this is just visualization. We're not, we're not going to actually be able to use it. So longitude, no, we we haven't. Sorry, longitude would be minus one ninety nine. Uh, would be one ninety nine. Oh, actually, one ninety nine. God damn, I'm. They wish they'd be consistent. One ninety nine. This number is actually the same because of. Um, 360 degrees in the circle <coughs> excuse me is actually the same as minus 160.12 so this is actually why can't I make this bigger oh there we go and I think I'm going to make this stream exclusive content I mean I damn it can we, can we get rid of this can we go full screen um, but anyway this gap here is probably where Beetlejuice is blocking other stars from being being shown. Is there a show the bright stars? Aladdin. What, what does this do? No. Oh, we're looking for images here. Okay, so this is... So what is this here? Yeah, this... Does this tell us what that is? Oh, good shit. Um, and should I have actually done this one? And this one, it looks like we can make nice and big. Um, and it has shiny colors in it, so let's use that. Um, galactic coordinates, I want to do a search. J2000. I mean, we know what the galactic coordinates are. J2 oh, we, we, okay. Oh, this is shiny. It's a real globe. This is pretty cool fucking shit. Um... And I guess if we wanted to, we really could find... Let's actually make some effort to find Beetlejuice here. So we're looking for galactic longitude. Uh, has two values, which is ugly, because they're the same value. 199-ish. I mean, we're going to... This is going to take a while. Um, uh, let's start in here for a bit. 199-ish. And minus, I think, 8. So, like, right in this region. Are we, are we, oh, we're not zooming in, that's why. Zoom, hey. Cool. So, let's make sure we do have the right coordinates again. We don't want to be zooming into nothingness. I need to do something about this, this layup I have here. 
Uh, minus 8.95-ish is what we're looking, so right in this area. Okay, I think I went too far. In the top, I thought you could too. I thought you could too. I tried that. But you can't. That was my first guess. And I, then I thought you could do a search, but you can't do that either. Um, and the layers you can put in here. Export view. There's, there's some cool shit here. Yeah, I wish I could do that too. Unfortunately, I think I can't. So, um. Uh, it is Pomodoro time, but I'm having too much fun with my guest. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and skip this one, too. Despite what I said earlier. Okay, i got to keep stop jumping back and forth here. 199.78. Oh, so we're actually... I'm hoping we can actually find Beetlejuice itself. Um, so right in this area, because um, I don't know if these the visualization includes the brighter stars. The Gaia definitely doesn't include the brighter stars itself, but the visualization might. So we want one ninety nine point there. 199.78. So that's pretty close to where we are right here. <coughs> but I think we're way off on the, um, not way off, minus 8.95 in the latitude direction. And that's closer to here. So I don't know how helpful this is now. Um, I think that just recenters. Um, Okay, this should have automatically um, given us better imaging where, where possible. I think here we might have to go to the layers. Um, I've done this before, and I remember it's a, just a real pain in the freaking ass. Okay. Oh, you know what? I, you know what? You know what? Where on this map do you think Beetlejuice might be? Question for our viewers. Which, which of these stars could be Betelgeuse, do you think? Yeah. And this, of course, is the only bright star in the area. This is Betelgeuse. And I'm kind of tempted to save this. And this is one where they actually are giving us the actual sky view, so Betelgeuse is huge. Um, but now that we centered Betelgeuse, it can be a little... Ah, I'm going blind. What the hell is this? There's a hole in Beetlejuice. <coughs> um, now that we do that, now we can actually look at some other. Um, now we can go back to uh, totally destroying something. What the hell did I do? <coughs> Excuse me. Wait. Oh, did I just move it? Up? I thought I had to do. What the fuck? What the fuck did I just do? Oh, it was on the other one, wasn't it? Hang on. I broke it. Okay. Panic. I had this. Didn't I have this full screen? And it didn't look like I changed web pages. Maybe it just didn't like me. Um... Oh, what the hell? That is just fucking weird. Oh, okay, now I'm in the full screen mode. Okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, so this is, of course, Beetlejuice. We can kind of confirm that with the galactic coordinates looking very much like they should. Uh, that's fine. We want the layering now is... Um, what are my tools? I can't see my tools. Um... So now we can hopefully go back to this. Oh shit, that's what does that. That is weird. Didn't do that the first time. Where you go? You want you want full size map. 
Oh, do I need to do this? No. Oh, okay. I did a, a browser shrink. So I think we can get this thing back to full screen somehow through magic. Um, let me do a, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so this is good. Now I just need to make this somehow magically full screen. Um, God damn it. So where is the please go full screen thing? Um, I'm pretty sure that's not what I want. Well, I can draw on Beetlejuice if I wanted to. Oh, there it is. This is the uh, full screen. There we go. Okay, so do not hit this button again. Um, all right, I'm still going to try to find another layer, but I'm not going to do the one that kind of sucks, obviously. I've gone through all this at one point. I remember doing all this, and some of the layers exclude uh, large files. Others do not. The DSS colored. Okay, but now I know how to get back, so you can't fool me. Um... Well, okay, you can. Oh. That is fucking cool. I mean, I don't... That is just fucking amazing. And I don't need to save a PNG file because this is all videotaped. And by videotaped, I mean recorded by, um, by Twitch. Okay, I gotta say, this is a pretty damn cool picture of Beetlejuice. Um, the only reason to actually, uh, to to uh to export this aside from wasting uh their bandwidth um there's it's an image that is not an image okay i guess this is on top of it or something um what is the heel pick squid oh that is cool is if we wanted to sort of say you know you can go here and look at this um to see all the stars that are visually close to, to Beetlejuice. Okay. Now I just want to do it because I want to fuck with them. Um, or is it only the first one that you can get to... Uh, they don't have a tools listed here. Oh, uh, this is... VPSHA. And what the... Oh, no, this is not right. Hey, there's a Beetlejuice again. This It looks pretty ugly in this one. So let's... Let's let's go ahead and try to hit the visualization page again. And um, this one seems to have a bunch of really cool things, like... Do cool things with it. Why I don't see how why they have two of these, to be honest. I, I don't really see that. This one has a full screen mode. Uh, which isn't really full screen, by the way. It, I would like to point that out. Um, but it does not appear to have... Oh, so now we can do that. Export view as ping. Uh, we won't be doing that because this is way too broad of a view. Uh, we're going to search for... Oh, you, you can do this, but not from up there. In fact, it's spelled like this. Hey, hey, that worked. Obviously, we're going to have to... A zoom, zoom, zoom. And this little black hole here is Beetlejuice. Which is actually sort of interesting in and of itself, because you would say, hey, Beetlejuice isn't a black hole. Um, but it, it blocks, they eliminate the bright stars, but the things that are behind it can't be seen like this. So now, we go to something interesting. I don't know why the center of Beetlejuice has a little hole in it. Maybe someone should look into that. Okay, so my tools have now gone away. Uh, apparently when I'm in this mode, I'm not allowed to download this as a PNG. 
Although this is, I could of course use screen capture of many, many different things you could do here. Um, yeah, it's actually good to take a screenshot at the very least. Hang on one second here, we want to get rid of this. Um, look, some shiny pictures of Beetlejuice. Let's go ahead and save the full page. Okay. Oh, the only benefit of having this is to show which one layer we're looking at. DSS colored. Y. Fermi colored. Is that because they don't have a Fermi colored one? It's just taking me back saying I, we can't have Fermi colored, so we're just doing this? Or have I somehow totally lost the connection between... Um, oh, I, I guess... So for some reason that just, it's not a great interface. Good data, not a great interface. Glimpse 360. Gotta hit this to do some magic and then hit this to do other magic. Hey, cool, according to Glimpse, this is empty. Um, let's go back to the uh, Gaia color flux map. Okay, so, so this is actually not interesting. This is apparently, so we have Nat, grayscale, cube helix, rainbow. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why this is funny, but it is. It's just like uh, stupidly color of some pieces of um, um, DSS red, iris colored. That's actually not bad. I like that. I kind of like that actually. Um, and for some reason, they chose rainbow colors despite anything. Let's go ahead and do the. Uh, Take a screenshot of this, and I'm going to go ahead and leave this in here because I think that is actually um, that is actually useful for people to see how I'm getting this. In fact, let me go back to this one now that I know how to do their get around their stupid magic. Um, too big. Okay, and I will take a screenshot this time with the uh, with the indication of which image there we're looking at. Um, now, by the way, if you're saying, have I forgotten, not, not, not you, Mr. Mr. Moo, but the person in YouTube or the no one who's watching this, the theoretical audience, hey, didn't you forget that you were just doing this because you were waiting for a download and this was just a way of distracting, uh, getting some time? I do remember that, actually. And we will get back to the data in just, what is all, all these color just sounds like, like Technicolor or something, which is like, <gasps> shiny, motherfucker. Gorgeous. That is beautiful. That's okay, kids, if you are watching, even though you're not allowed to watch. Um, remember, looking at things in fake colors is way prettier than looking in real life. In real life, Beetlejuice is a, is a red giant. It's basically a red dot in the sky. But if you look at it through airwise artificial color, it looks like this really cool thing with a hole in it. So, again, kids... Okay, let's do one more before we go back to our um, our query. No photo normalization. That already sounds bad. Uh, okay, nothing there. I could go through this all day. Fermi color. What is Fermi color? Did we already look at Fermi color? Oh, uh, Fermi color is stupid. I'm sure it's very important to like scientists and bullshit, but. The universe is a grid of rainbow squares. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, enough, that's enough bullshit. Okay, it did, it did go ahead and do the query, and it will give me 39 megabytes worth of results, which we can look at in a table, but it's actually going to be kind of stupid. We want to just download. No, hang on, how do I do this? Um, download results. Um... And did that actually do it for me? Or Yeah, here we go. Unfortunately, this is coming in the VOT format, which is really cool, by the way. Uh, I do have something in the VOT format, but it, it's so cool, I don't think I understand it. We do have something else in it, so let's take a look here uh, from earlier. Yeah, we have another result we had earlier in uh, VOT format. And the really nice thing about v VOT format is, oh, it's understandable. It's just extremely, um, it's <laughs> the data. These are the description of the fields, but the actual data is in base 64. Uh, because for some reason, um, 
the people who do this stuff, some of them are really, really old school. Uh, I'm surprised it's not in a UU decode format. But this is not a very useful format for us. So let's um, let's tweak this to be. I want to do it in. Uh, I want to do it in CSV. Um, and and I did this yesterday for a different query, so it will come down, and it's going to look fine. Here we go. I think what's interesting is they don't compress their CSV. For some reason, they feel the need to compress the format that's already. Well, I don't know. So this is, we can watch this grow in size because uh, just like you can watch a penis grow in size. Um, so this is 8.9, I think it's 39 megabytes total. It's going to take a little while to come down. Um, so we can actually look at this while it's downloading. Um, um, and this is basically just the chunk of the GAIA catalog. Um, that has this data in it. So we're, we're still nowhere near actually, well, we're close now to figuring out uh, the actual stars close to Betelgeuse, but for right now, uh, this is just all the stars that are you know, roughly in the same direction as Betelgeuse, within one degree of, of Betelgeuse. And I'm actually kind of happy it lets me download all this data. I was kind of worried originally um, that it would, uh, it would give me a limitation on how much data I could download, but it uh, and it probably does. There's some. So I mean, you could download the whole catalog if you want. Um, but in through this interface, I was worried it might give me a limitation. But one degree by one degree is pretty good, actually. Um, so let's take a look here. Yeah, 32. I think it's 39 megs. So is what it said earlier. So okay. I'm gonna mute the screen briefly while I. Um, kill a small child. So just stand by. Do you still like mommy more? Huh? 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 Okay, we're all done there. Um, and I think by now, um, th the download time... Oh, shit, it's bigger than I thought it was. That's what she said. Um, I assume the time download, the, the download time here would be comparable to the time required to kill a small child, but apparently it is longer. Okay. So, in theory, if we wanted to be efficient, which we don't, we could start writing a program to parse this data because we do have enough of it to start parsing. And from that parsing, um, get the uh, stars that are close to Orion uh, is what we could do, but we won't. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think the child uh, that I killed had a coronavirus, so, um, you know, and if you are going to kill children out there, please remember to wear gloves. I mean, you know, because you don't want, like me, to have catch whatever diseases the little shits have. Okay. God damn it. I'm going to have to keep pattering like this, because uh, I really don't want to... I want to do it on the whole set. I don't want to do it on a partial result. Um, that is, there's some good question about how many stars are in this. 80,677 80, so far. And, of course, I could do word count, but... Um, okay. Is it, does it tell me how many rows are in the download? Oh, it does. 113,323. So I can just do a word count to see how close we're getting. Um, 90,000. All right. I've actually done something similar to this before. Um, so let's take a look at the program I used previously to try to parse Gaia. Uh, it's called BC Read Gaia, which is not... Um, thank you, and thank you very much for coming by. I very much appreciate you. Um, and, and anybody else who wants to come in, uh, please, have, go have fun. And I will say thank you, which looks polite, and at the same time also puts in a marker, so if somebody else comes in and says something, I can see them. Clever, huh? All right, let's go back to BC Read Gaia, which is basically, um, it just, it just knows the which fi fields that Gaia has. Um... Uh, oh, and this was originally, I was going to try to find galactic coordinates. 
there's an issue here, and I need to write, write this. This is important, actually. Um, the coordinates we get from Gaia are going to be very inaccurate. Um, and, and, we, and, and this is th not something they, uh, they, they deny. They, they're aware of this. Um, let's see. So, so somebody else actually, and I, I God, I wish I could remember his name because I need. To, I really am going to need to use his data. Plus, it's rude that I don't remember his name. Um, actually, give me a sec. I'm going to see if I can find it on my other machine, which is of course the the cool machine. I'm going to skip Pomodoro this one last time. Um, because I can. All right, I'm gonna try to find this guy. This uh, this should not be that hard to find. Um. Yay! It is Corin. I can't cut and paste between uh, machines. It's Corin Baylor Jones, and we will uh, we will get to him and what he has done. What the hell? Oh yeah. Okay. Um. We will get to what he's done. He's actually tried to make a statistical analysis of the data and figure out how to correct it um, so that it's more accurate, basically, and it doesn't have ridiculous numbers in it. Okay, that should be more than enough powder to have the bloody fucking thing uh, downloaded by now. Yay, finally, it's 107 megabytes. Not, not bad. Kind of chunky. Um... And why the hell they didn't want to compress this format, I don't know. This is the much bigger, uglier format. And 113.324, 113.323, plus a header row, we're good. Um, so now we're going to start feeding it to this, this program, which um, right now, of course, doesn't do anything, but that's kind of typical. Um, that's because I was probably testing it with something. So we will be running this a considerable number of times. Um, and I will pipe it to less, although this is only one line of, oh, actually it's not, okay. So these are the wonderful fields that appear in, in Gaia, uh, broken out by one at a time. Uh, I don't know what many of these words mean, which is kind of bad. Um, but the ones we actually care about for right now are going to be LB and, and parallax. They don't give a distance because distance is a computed value. And we're also going to care about, uh, parallax error. Parallax over error, this is just basically uh, 9 divided by 10, uh, field 9 divided by field 10. Um, it is important, and it, we're going to list it, uh, but, uh, but uh, it's, it's a computed field. So I sort of lied when I said they don't have computed fields. They do have computed fields, but they won't compute distance. Okay. Uh, this is really inefficient. It is inefficient for the whole catalog, but not necessarily for what we're doing. Uh, na -na 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 -na. Okay. Oh wow, this does print galactic coordinates. I am really happy. Oh, and I even mentioned Dr. Col this guy, Corin Baylor Jones, is awesome, and we will be looking at his data shortly. Uh, let's see. This is the absolute magnitude, which really doesn't matter because we're we're kind of we're, we're kind of um. Let's 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 see what this actually has pretty decent output I think here, and it's actually going to be printed output. So let's take a look real quick. Let's go ahead and remove the die testing so we can actually do something with it. Wait a minute. Whoa 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 whoa! I need to save this. I'm a moron. Okay, so this is pretty good shit. It's giving us the galactic coordinates, and I think the last one's the photographic magnitude, but that's not an issue for right now. Okay. Um, now some of you may ask, uh, you know, you could do this in JavaScript. If I did this in JavaScript, it would be more accessible to other people. Uh, but in this case, our data is going to be on disk. I don't see this as something, um, people are going to be able to use with, uh, online JavaScript. So, and plus I don't want to. Um, that's the more important reason is I don't want to, but also I'm not sure how helpful it would be. So we are going to stick with Perl for this. This is sort of big data analysis that uh, the jo online JavaScript, you might want to give people small pieces of data like the HYG catalog, but not, not something this huge. That is, you know, portions of the Gaia 
PRQ catalog. All right, so here we have blah, 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 blah. Um, since I can't spell it anymore, um, let's go ahead and convert Betelgeuse to galactic, three-dimensional galactic coordinates, um, which we can do by doing uh, spherical to XYZ. Got to be careful here because we've got degrees. Um, and also because I don't remember how my, I actually think I do actually. Um, and this could also be a negative number, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, longitude, I need to multiply, hang on, I, I have to do before I forget. I'm going to have to check this call. I don't remember exactly how I did it. And I also don't remember if, I'm pretty sure the, the measurement here is in, in light years. Oh, sorry, it's actually parallax, so it could be in, I have no idea what the fuck it's in. That's good shit. Um, so we had the parallax as being, uh, la 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 la, I know what I'm doing. Hang on. Oh, I, I have stuff between two, this is getting, I need to fix this. Um, the parallax is a milli arc second, so it's 0 0.655, and it's going to be 1 over that in parsecs. Um, now, in theory, if you're going to be very, very precise, uh, which I do, I'm not in the rest of this program either, the parsec distance, uh, y you could actually do it as a, if you draw the triangle, it's not quite 1 over that, it's, it's a little bit... Um, it's a little bit um, more complicated. It's like two times the arc sine of something, but this is at this at this limitate distance. It's not going to matter. Um, and I'm pretty sure this returns a list. So uh, I'm going to two things. I'm going to debug this, and I'm also going to check to make sure my my coordinates are correct in the. Um, I'm going to look at my library and make sure that these this data is correct. Legal octa. This is one of the fun things about Perl. If you put a minus zero in, it assumes the extra zero is because you want to use octal. Of course, we don't. Just one of those weird things. Um, this does not look like it's correct um, because we really don't expect it all to be in the x. So let's take a look at spherical to x y z. Um, and I'm guessing the the numbers are because I have. I don't have degree defined correctly here. Oh, okay. Um, degrees to radians. And degrees to radians. All nice and good. And now, I have no idea if that's correct, but it certainly looks better than what we had before. So we'll go with it. Um, all right, I'm gonna actually pink for a second. I know this is below the galactic equator, so that 22 is fine. 199, despite the fact that it looks like a positive number, it's ultimately really a negative angle. So this is gonna be in the third quadrant, where both x and y are negative. Okay, so the, the sanity tests work out. Now, um, and I'm not gonna BC get this yet. We haven't really done anything yet. I wanna make sure I don't think we need this anymore. I think we need this. Okay. Um, okay, so I guess this is the field where I try to eliminate some bad values, which we're not going to be doing for this experiment, uh, for this program. So we should just go here, get rid of this. Well, we need to get rid of this too, obviously. Um, okay. Oh shit, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to get rid of this line. Okay. Um, fields equals, okay, so this, this is where we're going to get our uh, distance here. Um, X, Y, Z. Spherical coordinates. Um, you know, it occurs to me when we went over here to get the the um, 
the uh, we search for Beetlejuice, we got these galactic coordinates. Let me actually go ahead and do that again. Um, Galactic video, and I want to export this view as is. I want to search, but let's let's see if we can get back to the interface where we left search. Um, wow, where did the search? When we did the search, it kind of told us where Beetlejuice was. That's that was the interesting part here. Um, oh, but I guess yeah, the center here is. The so these are actually also the galactic coordinates of Beetlejuice. Let's go ahead and copy them. I don't know if we're ever going to use them, but it you know. Um, per, I'm not get it here too. I think these are actually very similar to the ones we already have. In fact, they might be identical. Um, no, they're not identical. Okay, but I'm not sure I've got Beetlejuice centered. I guess we could find out real quickly by uh, looking at the two mass colored. Yeah, so we do have Beetlejuice centered. This looks different though. Um, Oh no, there we go. This is this is Beetlejuice. Um, and I know what you're thinking. When, when I move around like this, the numbers change, so I'm not sure I'm on the center of Beetlejuice. And the answer is when I go over here, it's said, oh, hang on, that's not good. So 0 0.890, and then it should jump. Yeah, it goes back to the center, I think, when you, when you do this. And it sort of indicates that by, um, by changing the color as well. And if this is different, I'm going to be upset. I'm going to hang on for a minute to do. No, it's not. Okay, so for Gaia DR2, this is the, um, this is the, um, this will make a hell of a screenshot. So we will do that. Okay. And this is the screenshot that sort of tells us that Beetlejuice is at this coordinate system. Uh, but this is a very small difference from what we're looking at here. These are it's good confidence that we have now that these are the uh, these are the coordinates. Okay, so now um, am I debugging the headers for every one of these suckers? I guess I was. Can't see that though. Oh, I thought I'd not saved it since the last uh, tweet. So. Okay, we'll do that for now. Um, and see, I actually do this right here. Oh, I'm special. I forgot that I can also, instead of multiplying by deg red, I can also pass the option, and I'm going to do that, degrees equals one instead, uh, to say that my data is in degrees. Um, the only thing I'm worried about here is, so how do I get, okay. So actually, even my R, because we're doing everything in um, milli arc seconds, my R is in, uh, is in parsecs there. So this is all good shit. Um, okay, so now, uh, at this point, I think we're actually pretty good at just finding the distance. Uh, and because there's so few of them, we're just going to compute the distance directly. We're not going to compute the distance squared because we don't need to, uh, we can sort the actual distance pretty easily. This should not be an issue. Now let's see if there's anything else I'm missing here. Longitude, latitude, um, number of parsecs distance, which is, it's one over the parallax, but the parallax is given in a milli arc second, so we have to convert. Okay, then let's go ahead and do this sucker here. Um, Oh, okay. So uh, let's let's make this a little bit easier on ourselves. Beetlejuice X, Beetlejuice Y, Beetlejuice Z, and I'm not British. I just like using the word Z. Uh, squared. God damn it! I always forget whether Perl uses. Yep, it uses star star to be squared. It's an eternal blight upon humanity that this isn't. This isn't uh, that they don't use this consistently. So this should give us the distance squared, and this should give us the distance proper. So now I'm going to bring this print up here a little bit because it's a little bit too far away. 
So what we have here is the distance from Beetlejuice. Um, we want to print the, d d d we don't actually care about the XYZ coordinates uh, or the absolute magnitude for that matter. Uh, we care about the distance and the source ID, which is how we could search for it. We will probably put more crap into here um, later. I guess we could take the RA and the declination. This is, none of this is going to be super helpful, actually. Um, so we what, what we kind of want to do is actually um, take this and see if we can marry it, some of these at least, to another, to another um, catalog, which would be the right way of doing things. But now, let's just see what this does. Okay. Okay, so it apparently does. It's going to print out, whoa. Beetle division by zero. Okay. I am not even seeing where I am dividing shit, so that's kind of not nice. Um, ooh. Is there places where parallax is not even defined? That's probably it. Okay, that's cool. Not, you're allowed to have that parallax. You're allowed to have that parallax. That's a good parallax to have. Eh, fuck. Okay. Um, there's two possibilities here. One is that this is simply an error in parsing the data. The other is that this solution ID does not have a, a parallax measurement associated with it. Um, and I forget whether everything has a parallax assigned to it. Um, and I'm probably going to have to look that up. Let's, let's just see if we have um, the, uh, the actual parallax value here. The, the documentation might be helpful. Uh, and it might not be. Let's check it out. And I think in some place they brag about they have parallaxes for almost everything. Um, ah, God damn it. Some place they actually talk about um, they have cross matches, they have external catalogs. Some place they actually talk about how complete their data is. Um, Let's see if we can find data dr2 missing parallax. There should be something on this. There we go. Um. Okay. More than this is uh, 1.3 billion sources. Range for G, okay, uncertainty. Corresponding, blah, blah, blah. The key phrase here might be the 1.3 billion, because there's more than that number of stars in there, but let's just see what's going on here. Um, uh, that doesn't help us. Where are the missing ones, damn it? Okay. This better not be a PDF. Let's take a look at this real quick. This might be Corrin. This is Mr. Corrin. Baller, Baylor, Baylor Jones. I don't want to insult him. He is he's a nice guy. He might actually have, the, this might be his paper on talking about how not to use it. Okay. Uh, parallax. Um, yeah, so this is apparently um, more than 1.3 billion. Okay, so now we need to go back and figure out how many freaking stars there are in Gaia to begin with. Uh, if that number is bigger, then we're fine. If it's not, we have a problem with how we're actually doing the um, computation. And because I have my data spread out over um, two different places, that's really very nice here. Um, 
It's a little bit harder to solve. I think it's right on the first page of Gaia itself. Oh, here we are. Okay. So the fact that it says 1.3 billion covers us. Um, meaning we're here. Going up a little bit. Uh, so not everything's going to have a parallax. And we, we have to kind of ignore the ones that don't. Um, and don't get me wrong. 1.3 billion is a very impressive number. But it does mean there are some missing parallaxes. And therefore, our program uh, must ignore those. Um, I got to be a little bit careful here because there's a difference between a missing parallax and a parallax of exactly zero. Pomodoro, I'm going to do it this time back in two and two. Okay, we're almost back, and real freaking life is being a little bit annoying, but only for a second or two. Uh, let's see. Sorry, real freaking life is being slightly um, okay. Okay. All right, so we do know there are some that have missing parallaxes. Um, in theory, we could do a query just to annoy people um, to see um, how many do have zero parallax, parallax, which is different from having a null parallax. Um, so let's do that, actually. Oh, wow. Literally one. That does not seem correct. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There's none. There's nothing that has a zero parallax. Um, what the hell did I just do? Okay. All right. Zero stars with. Oh, cool. You can actually look at your query again. Um, shiny. All right. So Gaia DR2 confirms that nothing has zero parallax, which actually would not be very useful. Um, so we can use the shortcut here that says unless, which would be if not in other languages. Um, 
Let me use the hash parallax. Now actually, if hash parallax is zero, it's not hash parallax. I'm just gonna keep doing this uh, unless hash parallax. That's what I meant to do. I uh, missed. Uh, this should allow through negative parallaxes, which aren't useful either. Um, in fact, yeah, I, I might have to go with um, the the what the thing with negative parallaxes is it's theoretically possible uh, that if you allow the stand the error of the you know, the margin of deviation, you could get a parallax value out of them. Um, so it's not necessarily that we want to get rid of all of these. So now it looks like we're not having any issues. Of course, a lot of this garbage is just printing out debugging statements. So what if I don't debug now? I am so clever. All righty. Gosh, there's a bunch of stars that are in the same direction as beetle beetle dee beetle dee dee The distance there, by the way, is in parsecs. Uh, and there will be 133,000 of these rows. And now we're ready to boogie down. So we will create a directory of the day, just a directory that uh, we can do all this crap with. And I don't even think I need to correct anything because if we don't debug, we're getting exactly the answers we want. Um, so we will go ahead and, well, we won't need to say, um, beetle1.text. And then we will, it's taking longer than expected. Mm. It might just be that we're doing a lot of other, there we go. And let's make sure the same number of rows. It doesn't, but that's okay because we're skipping the ones that have no parallax, booyah. Okay, um, and so now, okay, let me make sure we're doing this correctly. We do want to sort by uh, the number of light years from Beetlejuice. We'll call that Beetle 2 for no compelling reason. And we will now look at Beetle 3, okay. And this is in parsecs again. Um, so it looks like there's quite a few stars um, that Gaia 2 believes are, are fairly close uh, to Betelgeuse. Um, another thing we have to sort of worry about is, is it possible that there's a star that's closer to Betelgeuse but doesn't get caught in our little web because, uh, because its angular distance is more than one degree? Um, so we do need to, we need to need to A, disclaim that, and B, um, B, calculate for it. So, um, and let's see. There's quite, a, quite a few stars here that are pretty close. Um, and I just freaking want these to be um, light years. So even the closest star to Betelgeuse is fur that we know of is further than Alpha Centauri is from us. Uh, but let's confirm that, because I want to have an excuse to use this again. So this is 1.61 distance to Alpha Centauri in parsecs. Is it more than 1.61 or less than 1 point? Oh, yeah. So the closest star to Betelgeuse is, is further than the closest star to us. Uh, not necessarily surprising. Okay, so the, the big sort of ugly question here is... Um, is this star, I'm gonna put this into Google just for fun, but I mean, if, if I get anything, I, I doubt I'll get anything. Is this star, does this star have a better name? Uh, does it have a cross-reference that we could use uh, to give it a better, or is this the only way to re 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 reference it? Um, so let's go ahead and do the other thing first, because we, we can. Um, one degree of variance um, at, should be a little bit careful here. Um, I mean, 500 light years or whatever, but that, that, that part's fine. Um, the question is, um, if you move closer uh, away from Betelgeuse towards Earth, you will have a, a slightly less wide cone So we want to we want to make this um, uh, we want to make this um, an overest. We want to make sure that when we say all stars within this distance are necessarily within this cone, we use a number smaller than the distance to Betelgeuse. 
So let's go ahead and do let's go ahead and do something semi clever here. One degree of variance at um, at one point zero zero six five um, parsecs. Oh, let's see. Um, I probably will have to actually work that out in numbers. Um, I'm trying to do it without going to GeoGebra, but I mean it, it is a geometrical problem. Um, so one degree of variance on on I guess one on either side. So that's actually kind of nice. Um, so the tangent of that, sorry, one degree, the tangent of one degree. Um, is the opposite, which we don't know, over the adjacent, which is this number of parsecs, which is kind of cool because it means we're going to get a double reversal here. Or, tangent of one degrees is... Times the opposite, so the opposite the um, the one degree gives us is tan of one, and this is nice because we can use it for other things as well. Now, of course, we could also write this as parallax. Oh, let's just explore this. This is fun. Um, Opposite over the adjacent, which is huge. Okay, so we got this, but we also know the parallax. The this thing here uh, is one over the parallax. So the opposite side is tangent of one degree in this case, times the parallax, uh, times a thousand because we're using milli, ar uh, you know, we're using milli arc seconds instead of arc seconds. Um, there's probably more we can do here because uh, I mean we're using degrees and arc seconds, but let's just stop here. Okay. Um, uh, so that's going to be pretty tiny, but let's let's figure out how tiny. Um, this should work. It should accept Mathematica um, output times the parallax, which is this number here, after correction. Mm. Yeah, it's being kind of funky there, but that is essentially what we need. All right, we will give this to Mathix. One of the few things Mathix can still do. Okay. Uh, result, oops, a mama, is this many parsecs. Um, I'm having trouble believing this result because I think I screwed up a denominator somewhere. Um, because that is a very, well, let's see, do I believe that? Um, I don't believe Times, yeah, that number is way too small. Um, so somewhere in here, I, I effed up. Mm. So we're okay with this up to here. There's I flipped I flipped a, a, a variable so I flipped a, a fraction somewhere is what I did. Um, so let's see if I can figure out why where. Okay, so this would be like um, the tangent of one degree, which is about one fifty seventh of a radian. Um, is the opposite side over the adjacent side. The adjacent side is huge. Uh, but the opposite side you would expect to be at 157th of the length. So our expected answer 
is about 50, 1 over 57 times the distance to uh, Beatrice. Uh, because that is, that is, that's where we're, something is going wrong here. So, 1 over this number here, looks like uh, we computed this like a billion times now, 152-ish, okay. So we're saying 150 times tan 1 is, that should be okay actually, 150 times tangent of 1 degree. Yeah, that's the kind of answer we're expecting, two point, that's, that's kind of what I wanted. Um, if we're using Betelgeuse's distance, which we, we actually can't, we have to, we have to fix it by using this number itself and then kind of um, uh, iterating, but we, we can do that in a way that's, we can sort of jump over that iteration. Okay, so where did we go wrong here? Tangent of one is equal to, um, times the opposite side, which is about, um, we got 152-ish. So 152 times this number is the true engine of one. Something's wrong. So this is the opposite side. This is tan 100 yet, actually. So tan 1 times 150, which is this, which is fine. So we multiply both sides by this. We get 150 tan 1 is the opposite, which, uh, which I believe. So how have I fucked this up? Op over 1 over x should be the same thing as this. Um, this is basic math here. So tan 1 should now be um, oh, what the hell? This is about 1 over 57, yeah. Um, okay, so that's what we expect to multiply the, um, the adjacent length by, the, the 150, and that is, yeah, okay. So some, maybe I just did this wrong over here. So the opposite is tangent of 1 degree times the Right. I think it's over the parallax actually. Okay, let's see what happens here. So, so the tangent of one is equal to the opposite, which is uh, about two point six. We're saying over one point the parallax, which is about this, and. That looks about right. That is the tangent. So this this equation's fine. So now we go over here. We say the tangent of one degrees is approximately this number times the opposite, which we believe to be um, something like this. That's fine. That is about the tangent of one. Um, so the opposite is now tangent of one divided by this number. So let's see, tangent of one degree and divided by. This still seems okay, actually. Um, yeah, that's fine. And so now that's the tangent of one degree times the parallax measurement. Wait, what? No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, that's totally wrong. The point zero six five five is the parallax. So the opposite is tangent of one over the parallax. I think what I was trying to get back from is the um, one over the parallax is the distance. So opposite is tangent one times distance, but that doesn't help us any because we need the parallax to get the distance. So this is wrong. Okay.
So what this tells us is um, at the distance of Betelgeuse, we get everything that's within 2.61 parsecs. Uh, however, it's quite possible we're not quite at the distance of Betelgeuse yet. We could be two point. We could be like further, you know, back from Betelgeuse. Um, uh, and then we would have a smaller uh, range because, because um, obviously, as we get closer to Earth, the same angle is going to cover less space. So we're going to kind of finesse this by saying that we know um, Betelgeuse is um, no idea what the hell I'm talking about. All right, Pomodoro, back in two and two. It might help. back. And we are back. Okay. Um, so the issue here is that if we're closer uh, than Betelgeuse, the, uh, the um, one degree field will give us less of a, uh, a width. Uh, but that's not a huge deal because as we see, um, this is good for 2.61 parsecs. And so we can do this. Oh, I was kind of hoping we would get it within, yes, 150 light years. Okay, 150 parsecs, sorry. So, um, 150 parsecs. Um, range is 150 times the tangent of one degree, which one of the few things Mathix does well is numerical, which is actually um, almost the same number, 2.61826. Um, so claim we will get all stars within 2.5 parsecs of Betelgeuse. Because the problem would be that even it's possible there are stars that are really close to Betelgeuse that don't show up in our, um, that don't show up in our cone because our cone is not a sphere. However, it contains a sphere. Uh, that is is it sufficient? So let's take a look here. So we can confidently say that the um, these stars here are the closest stars to Betelgeuse. Uh, beyond that, we cannot confidently say that they are closest. It might be that there are other ones that are closer, uh, but have a greater angular distance from Betelgeuse. Um, so these are not very interesting looking stars. Um, I guess the other thing we can do is we can give their, their magnitude as comparison. Uh, and there's some other stuff we actually do need to give here. So let's be a little bit, um, let's do this. Um, I probably should make a note somewhere that I've altered the program to give me close distances to Betelgeuse, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, so if dist is less than two point, greater than 2.5, uh, let's not even bother to print it. So now this should print out very, very much the exact thing we need. Uh, it takes a while. 
Oh shit. I do need to give it some data. Um Anyone remember which one it was? Uh fuck. It's a later one obviously, but I think that's it. Yeah, there we go. All right. And this is not sorted, but that's that's fine. All right. So what other information do we want on these um lovely stars? Um Probably don't need the galactic longitude and latitude. They're very, very close to Betelgeuse. Um, we might want the the magnitude as viewed from Earth, and uh, and also the um, the absolute magnitude, but that's different. So magnitude is viewed from Earth, and right ascension and declination aren't going to help us much. Uh, oh yeah, and the other thing we need that we kind of got rid of is the um, the parallax error. Uh, we Because this is really tells us how, how close we are to having a real star as opposed to something that just could be a, a, a graphical error. It could just be an error in parallax measurement. So let's do that. Um, I kind of like the fact this is... Um, so this is... The higher numbers here are better. So this is a really good number here that says that within one standard deviation, um, the parallax is very accurate within one standard deviation. None of these stars are really standing out as being super bright. Um, so this is the only one that might, well, actually, here, this one might too. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Actually, we'll go ahead and sort these by the... Um, Two, three, three, four, K four and N R. There we go. Um, yeah. So these two stars might actually show up somewhere else, and maybe this one as well. Well, actually, with the thirteen magnitude, we we have some shot that these are going to show up somewhere else. Um, the others. I think. Well, I mean, at seventeenth magnitude, this is probably the closest. This is the one that's right in the middle. It may or may not show up in other catalogs. Okay. Um, so let's go back to the cross-referencing um, thing that we had up somewhere. Uh, so this is a guy who did it, but I don't know if let me ask if there's an official source. Um, <laughs> This is actually really important because it's not saying not everything. And we should probably get this URL down here too. Okay. So blah, 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 blah. The main goal, of, let me just see if they, I mean, it seems like if they would have their own method of um, external catalogs. Oh, hello. Not what I expected. Um, so the Hipparcos catalog. If I go, we're using Hipparcos, so we probably should stick with that one. Um, another quick thing we want to look at here is if either of these 13th magnitude stars were in my original list, I don't think they were actually, to be honest. Um, they're, they're too faint. Um, yeah, this is only going to end up at magnitude 10. Um, now we could look to see if there's any, if we got a little bit further out, if there's any stars that are 10th um, magnitude, or which would be a match to a given catalog, but let's see. Um, So we're not getting in a match in the Hipparcos catalog because it's just it doesn't it's not faint enough basically. Um, let's see. Nomad might be the only real shot we have, and Nomad is almost as big as is uh, Gaia Data Lumens too. Um, the other possibility is. Mm. 
we're not going to necessarily do do the whole thing here, but if we look at the table data, uh, it'll only give us the first few rows. Um, but the table data is actually probably not that useful either. I don't think this has any join data on it. I don't know why I'm going to do that. Okay. Um. And I guess the only other thing, well, we def we do need to convert these numbers to light years before I forget. Um, and obviously, we need to cut down the precision because it's not really that high. Um, let's make this as bad as possible. Because these are just a bunch of notes that will hopefully eventually probably not become anything. Um, for consistency, we do want to convert to light years. Um, So the closest star that we have here, that's actually a reasonable parallax error. Um, 20.7th magnitude. Um, I wonder if we can find it in the visualization. Probably can't. Um, well, let's not be that pessimistic. Let's see if we can find it here in the visualization. Damn it. Open new page, you piece of shit. Seriously, it won't open a new page? There we go. Um, that's not what I meant. I wonder what the hell that was, though. Oh, come on. That is a perfectly good Gaia coordinate. Piece of shit. Uh, Alright, let's look at this here. Okay, so you got to say Gaia DR. So this is the proper designation. Um, okay, that's actually not a bad thing to do. We should use the uh, the the full designation so we don't get into the problem of having to specify our coordinate table as well. Um, so it's Gaia DR two, um, the and the number. So that that I'm okay with that. Gaia DR2, there. Why don't you like this? Your mama. Mm. We could also go to the um, galactic coordinate system here. And we might also be putting in a little bit too much work into this at this point. Um, Honestly, I don't even know if we can get these things labeled correctly. Um, well, let's see if we can do it from here. Gaia DR2 number. Sure. What the hell? That is the perfectly good name for it, according to you. Um, I mean, we don't, is this the solution ID? We're using the source ID to print, I'm pretty sure. Um, um yeah, we're using the source ID. Uh, the solution ID should not be the thing we need, but let's see what happens. That's not. It's not groovy, man. Uh, but let's see what's going on here. So it doesn't give me the red error box when I do that, but it doesn't also go anywhere. So that's not very useful. Um. I guess the question here would be. Because it knows how to get get there. I'm gonna go full screen on this puppy. Uh, zoom, 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 and a zoom, 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 and a boom, boom, boom. So I guess now we will print the galactic coordinates here, so we can find it. I mean, it's 
very very close to Peter Goose, obviously, but can we can we um L hash V. Not to be confused with Mel V, who is in the Spice Girls. And I probably don't care about sorting. Yeah. This is where the widescreen becomes an issue. Um I don't even remember what I was trying to find now. The most likely candidate, this guy here, 200.2976. That's actually quite far away. I mean, point two nine. wow. I mean, it, it's a small field of view, but still. Um, all right, let's see if we can find one that's closer to Beetle Goose. I'm sort of surprised these numbers are way out there. Um, but I guess, you know, once you're at that distance, uh, closest one is this guy. 200.12. Right about there. That's amazing. That actually means that it's... Um, it's not that close. In the s there's many stars that are closer to Beetle Goose in the sky. And I guess um, that should not surprise us. Um, so let's make a note here. Do we want to add angular distances and do we want to show the other stars? Make, make notes of this instead of just doing this. Um, include other stars angularly close but really far away. Um, Again, that's not that's not what the guy wants, but you know, who cares what he wants? What I want, what counts. Um, and this is where we get to do our. Let's go ahead and mention this: our lovely screenshots. Um, anyway, okay. And we're not going to include this in necessarily the answer, but of course, the question you can ask is: since Beetlejuice is so small. Why does it take up so much space on a photographic plate? It shouldn't take up one dot. And the answer to that question is actually surprisingly complicated. It turns out because everything has to go through a lens, and then there's, when you go through a lens, there's some sort of weird, uh, someone actually answered this for me. Um, and maybe I'll just quickly go to the, uh, the answer there. Um, it's, not, it's not complicated necessarily, but it's because we really don't, Except, of course, it's stack X change, which is weird, but it's not the way to do it. All right, let's see if we can find it. And this is the question I asked. Why do stars appear as circles, not points? Uh, and because this, you know, and, and the, 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 quest, the answer here is diffraction. It turns out when you look at something through a lens, uh, you get a what's known as a diffraction. And there's actually a diffraction pattern like this. Um, and, and it's just because of light passing through a lens, through an aperture. Um, and, and there's no way we can, I shouldn't say there's no way we can um, avoid that. Because I think if you look at images taken like radio radiation images, I don't know what I'm talking about, but there might be a way to get images that don't need to go through a lens, that are just basically point to point. Uh, but then again, uh, PSF is the, uh, uh, and even, all red stars, that's not actually what happens though. Focus the peak sharply by design, getting the lens. Oh my god. Um, so, this is actually some pretty cool shit. Um, the airy pattern, the airy disc pattern. Um, cool stuff. Very cool stuff. It's annoying because it means, hey, special appearance by your friend Beetlejuice. Um, it means that Beetlejuice effectively, you know, bright stars effectively mask dimmer stars. Okay, thank you for watching the stream. It has been now uh, 1 hour 54 minutes. Uh, I kind of want to go for 2 hours, but I'm not going to. Thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.